playing the anthem.
Everybody have a good day today? Every day is a good day. Amen. Oh, everybody that. Okay, every day is an exciting day. Remember, the people that know their God shall be strong and do excellent. So, you just, you got him? You got that old rascal on the phone? Yes, sir. Let's find out what he's up to. So, is that you? No. Can you hear me? What do you have to? Wow. Wow. Can you hear me? He's in someone's backyard. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Okay, I'm going to put you on speakerphone. Yell. What are you up to? What are you up to? Put the top part on. I'm on the back. 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 He's on the streets. Man, I'm just going to go through. Put it again. We did a Halloween canoe with us. We got our ghost to pitch in high reach. Put it in high reach. And that went well. And now we're getting ready to go out into our Hollywood into the red light district. And minister to the fifth and the prostitutes, and we'll be out until about five o'clock in the morning. Oh. Don't you have a curfew? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, God never sleeps, so we try not to get too much either, you know? Oh. So, how's it been going? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? How's it been? Pastor, can, you keep, can you keep us in prayer? We just had a shootout on our block. And uh, three guys just got shot right by our house uh, the other night. And one of the girls, the girl who goes out with us, Chris Hart got shot up. And so um, everybody's kind of spooked right now, but we're still going out anyway. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now, can you hear me okay? I can hear you very kind of breaking up. Well, praise God, we got to do the best we can. I guess it, it's probably my cell phone. Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, you're breaking up really bad. I can barely understand. Well, I can hear you pretty good. We're going to pray for you. Okay, keep us in prayer, guys. Do we love you? Oh, and we'll be coming to Arizona. I'm on this, this team where we go to different cities with our testimony and Christian rap shows. And we're going to be in San Diego, Palmdale, and then we're coming to Philadelphia. Uh, Praise God. Listen, if you're cutting out, we're, we're going to hang out and then we're going to pray for you, okay? You hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just took that speaker. We're going to pray for you now, and then we got to get out of their service. All right, God bless you. Love you, Zoe. Bless you, Zoe. Heavenly Father, God, we just come together. We pray, God, for what they're doing out there. We pray for your protection over those guys. And God, I just pray you give them boldness. Give us boldness. God, give us a passion like we've never had for the lost. I pray, God, we just shake everything loose. Or you shake everything loose in us. And get our minds and hearts and souls fixed on what your plan is for our life and God just and part of that is a passion for the hurting for the lost that'll motivate us and we just pray God no matter what help us not get caught up in our own understanding and God you've not given us a spirit of fear but a power of love and a sound mind God you said go take the land you said you've taken the defense away from our enemy so, I God, I, I pray that you just put this thing in our heart. Says, Let's go who wants to take it, because we're more than able. And, God, that's the spirit that you've given Caleb. That was another spirit. He couldn't, he couldn't understand, nor could he think, of how the enemy could defeat so many people when you're for us. And, my God, if you're for us, what on earth could be against us? So I pray that you burn out in our hearts, God. You just lead, you guide, and, God, we just follow 
listen to your commands, and by faith just step out with the boldness that only you can give us. For your glory we pray in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Son, Jonathan, come here a minute. Bring that other guy with you. Just hanging back there. How'd it go out there today? Awesome. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so today, um, us crosswalkers went up and down the street, of course, as usual. It was Daniel and Red Bear with me today. What's amazing about that is Daniel speaks Spanish. So we didn't have a language barrier like we usually have this time, which was just awesome. So we got to reach twice as many people, twice as fast because there was more of us. Sorry, don't worry, I'm not explaining that. <laughs> On the other hand, the sad but also good news at the same time was there's this group of, I'm going to call them street walkers for lack of better words, that um, sit at this bus stop on the northwest side of Indian School and 27th Avenue. They're there every weekend, so you know, we hand them whatever track we have and talk with them for a minute. Um, one of them is named Destiny, the other is Sarah, and I forgot the name of him, but I want to call him Nightwolf or something like that, something weird, but um, you know how it goes. Um, I offered him the cross, he said, that looks heavy. And he said he was a backsliding Christian to uh, Adam. And um, when I offered them the cross, he says, no, I think, I think I would break down and cry. I'm not going to do that. So all I'm saying is that we're definitely having an impact on that corner. And God is, was definitely with us here today. Come here, young lady. This still looks like a preacher's clothes, but I'm telling you something. You go. How was it on your part out here today? It was actually really cool. When we showed up, there was another church there that was um, a little bit past the 7-Eleven, and it was Phoenix Restoration Church. And um, they had their praise and worship team and, and their uh, disciples giving their testimony. So what I did was I kind of split the group of us that went out. I had some of them stay over there and help them and share with them. And then another group of us, we went out and um, went on, uh, went to the different corners and handed out tracks and water bottles. and. The coolest part for me today was um, towards the end of the day, um, I was praying with this family, and it was a young family, you know, the mom was really young, and, and so was the dad, and they had two little kids, and, you know, we prayed for them, and we prayed for their day, and we prayed for their protection, and after it, like, the mom looked up, and she had tears in her eye, and she said, thank you, thank you so much, and it, like, that, that what touch, that's what touches my heart, is because seeing stuff like that, seeing that it works, seeing that these people, when when they feel that love of Christ, like that's the reason we go out, and that's what keeps me faithful to that outreach to, to what God has called me to do. And that is because even just that, even just the thank you, is it's enough. That one person, it's enough. Yeah. Amen. Give the Lord your praise, up. In fact, he went to two hours today. We want to talk about. Let me tell you what. You talk about battles. Man, we've been having all kinds of warfares and battles. But, let's get this Caleb spirit. Let's get this in our heart. Man, we can sit down, you know, and you know, just go through life, and all of a sudden we got problems. You got to think, wait a minute. Who's trying to put me down? Who's been put down? The one that's trying to put me down? Wait a minute. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Let him have his head. He's going to hell. The place has already been created for him. He's already been defeated. God just let him run around for a little period of time here, causing a little bit of havoc. He's been put under our feet. Let's remember that. Think about that. You know what? We ought to think about. Oh, he wants to challenge me, huh? Jesus. I don't know what else to do but turn over to you because you take care of him. Amen. But I'm getting tired of him whooping up on me. Amen. Putting that crazy lifestyle. <laughs> Trying to get me back into that crazy lifestyle that I once could hardly get out of. By the way, you turn your life over to God, he's going to take you out of that lifestyle. That's what he died for. When he died, he defeated the enemy totally and completely. Totally and completely. You turn your life over to him, you're free. Well, I'm going to read the Bible. You get into, I mean, just if you want to just find out where, start reading Romans 6. 1 through whatever. And I'll tell you exactly what happened to you. 
And if you can just keep on reading Romans 8. Right. One and two. Who can separate you from love of God? Nobody. Read the whole thing. There's no condemnation. Anyway, <laughs> we, we need to realize who we are. Let's go take some ground. Let's go kick some. Uh, kick some. Come on. What do we need to kick? Pastor Ken, what do we need to kick? Pastor Gray, what do we need to kick? It's a north side of a southbound mule. Mules are stubborn. The devil's stubborn. Many of us used to be stubborn. But we're not anymore. I pray, God. We need to just go out there and, and anyway. So I went, this is me. I bet I had some other things I had to do today, but I'm just, I want to just motivate people, get them to go out and do it. So anyway, they're all out there preaching. This old rascal is preaching on the street. He's running around with a cross. People are passing out tracks, giving out water. That pretty young lady out there, she's doing her thing. And I pulled up there, and man, something inside me said, yes! Yeah. I went around and just see their thing was going pretty good. I said, you know what I got the thing? I turned around and said, why stop? You preach. Why? I already know how. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. I'll help everybody. You know what I mean? Everybody's got their own stuff. I'll help you to learn. I'll be there to encourage you. But I don't want to be the one that sits back, preaches everybody sits back and go get them, Pastor Walt. No, let Pastor Walt sit back and yeah. encourage you, teach you to do it, and you do it. Anyway, how was the preacher out there today? Well, it was great. It was, uh, it was really awesome. I wanted to say one thing. There's a reason why the devil doesn't want us to uh, be bold and, and, and out there because once you get going and once you let the Holy Spirit get a hold of you and you start speaking on a court being led by the Spirit, man, you can be a powerful witness to so many people. You can, cha you can change. Everyone here has got a different flavor, a different way to reach somebody, and everyone here has got a different person that they can reach that Pastor Walt may not be able to reach that I may not be able to reach, but you can reach. And when you get led by the Spirit, and when you're out there and you start feeling confidence, not in yourself, but confidence in the Word of God and confidence in the Scriptures we're learning and confidence in everything that we've been going through in the discipleship course, you realize that, wow, the Word of God is powerful and it changes people's lives and it catches people's intention and it hits their hearts. And the devil doesn't want you to know that, so he wants you to walk around scared to talk to people about God. Hang on a second. Keep that thought. That was this morning. Man, he's all jacked up, preaching out there. <laughs> then this afternoon, oh, but listen, what I love this. I like saying buses. 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 Come on, say it. Buses. buses. That ain't it. Say it. Buses. 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 Man, we got well, it was a little, it was a little band today. They get, they get the old Carl. I don't know where he's at. But I'll tell you something, that man can get things done. It's a car we need it. We got a little shuttle today. Need a crock. Put the cross in the shuttle. Go get some water. Put some ice on the water. Go get some guys, ladies in red shirts, right up the soul wing. Who's going to lead the thing up? He led it up. She led it up. He was out there. They put that cross in that <coughs> little van. Buzzed up to 27,000. I could just see them unloading that cross, man, with the power of God. They've been praying and seeking Amen. God and ready to go stand on the street corner. Terrorizing the place. Yes. <laughs> Taking the ground. That's what we need to do. Amen? Yeah. Then we had an outreach to Gideon reservation. And I'll tell you what, this is the funniest thing. They already decided to take a trip. I forgot, forgot, forgot where your car was. <laughs> no, I haven't done that yet. Man, they had this outreach all planned down there today, you know, and it was really neat down there in the reservation. All of a sudden, I get a call, I'm supposed to get out of the at 4.30, they forgot the PA system. <laughs> I'm glad they still had the vehicle to get them down there. Well, you know, actually, actually what happened is we didn't forget the PA system, but they were all used up for all the different outreaches. See, along the way. <laughs> along the way, that was poor planning. Huh? If they're planning this outreach down there, and the funny, that's not what, that's his, what he said. What I said, what everybody told me is somebody dropped the ball. No, I'll tell you what. 
We'll get Carl or Carl or Danny on it, and I guarantee you we'll have everything we need. Amen. That's fine. So I was going to get up and preach anyway with no PA system. I was getting everybody lined up. Let's go. All of a sudden, they said there's another band coming. Oh. So just about time I was going to get up there, hollering. Here comes this other band. Oh, I said, hey. What time are you supposed to start? Seven. I said, can you set that PA system up so we can preach a little bit? So sure enough, they set it up, but we got our priest and everybody that was there. I pointed my finger to him. I said, are you a Christian? Yes. I said, all right, fine. Let's be Christians. Let's let the power of the Holy Ghost work in us. And then we pray just like we prayed. By the way, we prayed five minutes of soul winning this morning. We just, everybody shut up. And we prayed that God would give us a passion for soul. Break us for soul. And that's what I share with all the Christians out there today. Let's, let's have this passion for soul. Only pray for one. How many does it take? You only pray one at a time anyway. <laughs> Who do you know that one could be? Maybe God just shows you, take, call us to go out, spend months, whatever. Just one person. Amen? Amen. All right, so he was down there today too. What are you, what are you doing down there too after doing everything all day? Then he said, man, I got to make sure I get back. Because I'm the sound man. Well, I was down there because I was asked to. We were, we were going to perform. Me and a couple other guys were going to do some songs, but uh, we forgot the PA system. <laughs> but I was down there. I, but honestly, I'm, uh, uh, I was. I would have gone anyways. But really, I think it's awesome what Church on the Street is doing and what God's doing in that reservation. And I could tell the spiritual warfare thing going on there is that I know one thing: the enemy doesn't want us there, so you know we're doing something right. You know what I mean? Things are going bad and everything's going to chaos. We can count it up to the fact that the enemy's sitting back watching us do something he doesn't want us to do. And that's uh, proceeding with the kingdom. So let's press on. You know, while we're, we're doing all this, thank you. Got another back here, Mike. While we're doing all this, he climbs up the top of a tree and starts cutting this thing down. What'd you do? Cut a tree down at your house. What's happening to you? Huh? I don't know. <laughs> Get a little God in me, I guess. It's your trust in God. And, uh, so I humble myself, and it's like, well, when you get up here in the tree, do you start cutting the branches off as you're climbing up? Or do you climb up to the top and start cutting the branches as you're coming down? So I thought about it, and I come clear to the top. I worked myself down. That way I still had something to step on as I was coming down, you know what I mean? So I, I humbled myself before I even started, and that was a good thing, so. You know, it's neat. They had it all organized, they pulled up with all their tree, don't sit down yet. All their tree trimming equipment, guess what the first thing they did was? Pray. Pray! Man, they grabbed all their hands and they prayed. And then the guy next door was kind of hollering about the tree. One of the guys grew up with him. You know what is so neat though? I'm not just thinking, you know, we just need to, whatever we do, we just need to pray, be open and willing to let God work in us and through us. And whatever it is we do, we need to do it as hard as we can. How many believe that? Amen. All right, let's give the Lord a good praise. Thank you.